I told your mother, I said, Kiki Palmer made me famous. <laughs> you see who I'm with. You know what I mean? Where they don't actually <laughs> say the words. Right. People were coming up to me mad at me. Like, why did you take that okay. baby? Dude, the next morning after that article came out, I got two texts from two very famous people. But you were outside handing out flyers in front of a theater recently for the movie. What compelled you to do that? I would hate to see me coming. Like, ugh, here she go. <laughs> here she come. Ugh. Hello, Sharon. Hello. I'm very interested to talk about with you this topic because I feel like our family is like built on the concept of having purpose in life. Like, I feel like y'all always <laughs> talk about it to me as a kid. I mean, it might have been heavy on me as a kid just because I was somebody that, you know, would have a public facing career. But even when mm -hmm. I think about dad, you know, he's always had a drive to have purpose in life. Everything yes. he did from, I want to have a family, I want to have a yeah. wife, I want to have yeah. kids, I want to make people proud, I want to be a deacon, I want to serve the community. He's always had a thread that made him feel like, okay, my absolutely. life is in service of something yes, uh, bigger absolutely. than myself. So I want to ask you, um, how do you value purpose in your life? Oh my goodness. And in your I career? Girl, I hate when people go to talking about you work too much, you know, you're, you know, you're just focused on everything and you don't have time for this. And I know that's usually some lazy ass person <laughs> <laughs> on some old Mom, low self-esteem, on some old low, low ass self-esteem, something going on. Uh, yeah, I, you know, like you said, I'm a Virgo, so I'm very purposeful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think it's it's interesting, right, to what you said, because I can understand how, OK, somebody is lost in their purpose to the point that they don't see purpose in anything else outside of that. Yes, that's right. a real thing. Right. There should be balance in life. Absolutely. But I also feel like when you don't, you know, sometimes there there is fear inside of us. Like I remember when I was about 16, 15, 16, I started to really see the impact of my career as it pertains to people that, um really felt represented by me. You know, you guys started me talking to schools as a kid and really kind of being a person in the community. And I started right. to feel like that public speaking or that like using my platform to empower others, like this aspect of my my brand, quote unquote, building. And it gave me a sense of purpose. But the purpose also scared me because I was like, well, wait a minute. Well, if I do that, then shots is going to be fired at me. And if I if I do this, then people are going to start tearing me up like they tear, tore it up so-and-so. And, -so. and right. well, if I really embrace this purpose and really dive into that, then I've got to actually own up to it. I've actually got to wear <laughs> the responsibility of what that looks like. And I think, you know, sometimes that is scary if you feel like your purpose is really big, which I think everybody's is. Well, the first time you had said that to me where you said, you know, <laughs> am I putting my life in danger, you know, being a <laughs> being a voice or something. And, and, you know, I thought it was funny when I first heard it, but then I thought about it. And then when you went out there with the National Guard, I was like, well, I was spooked, Miss Lady. Maybe yeah, she nice. is. I'm like, maybe she is putting her life in danger. But but the, the real reason um, your dad, first of all, you're right. Your father and I are purposeful people. We're faithful people. We're community people. Mm -hmm. We believe in the community. We believe in too much comes much responsibility. Absolutely. Yeah. So part of that was the reason why we wanted you to go into the community. But the other part is we wanted you to uh, understand how blessed you were. Mm -hmm. And we wanted you to be grounded. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Very, it's very easy to have things, material yeah. things, and then, you know, block everything else out. And mm -hmm. we wanted you to go into the community because we wanted you to see kids that didn't have things. We wanted mm -hmm. you to go to Miami to embrace young minds to the after school program and see kids that had single moms and the single moms mm -hmm. was dressing them um, and, and like little tea outfits and they were having tea mm -hmm. and that, you know, we wanted you to see community. How people are trying in our yes, community and working exactly. hard and need, need a voice and need to be represented and, you know, to be yes. just upheld in, in a world right. where sometimes our voices are shut out. And I think that also is the bigger thing when I think about purpose, right? I think a lot of times people, yeah. when somebody hears purpose, it can seem like self-fulfilled. Well, I want to be this and I want to do that. And that's my purpose to be uh, right. big in this or a star in this or a blah, blah, blah. But I actually think that 
While purpose can seem self-fulfilling, the whole concept of knowing and finding your purpose, what purpose really means is your purpose in being service of others. Absolutely. And and to like I said, too much comes much responsibility because like, you know, I knew that um, little girls seeing you would inspire them. And, mm-hmm. and, and I, and I wanted you in the community. I wanted them to be able to touch you and feel you and see you so that you weren't a dream to them. Yeah. How do you yeah. grapple or how do you make sense of the, re- the, the, the idea that, you know, when you are a person that is so driven in your individual purpose, how does that, I don't want to say compete, but how does that become a problem for your personal purpose. And I'll put it into to this scenario. Yeah. Like I remember when Michelle Obama was talking about Barack Obama and she was just saying how him wanting to be this, you know, live in his purpose, becoming yeah. even the president and being this figure that is representative of so many people all over the world and living this dream and being this great big hope. Yeah. Um, and the need and the, the, the like how that is something valuable for us to have seen how it also was really draining on them in her, in his personal life. You know, like it's like, he's a father and he's a husband, but then he's this big person to the world that he has all of this kind of responsibility to. How do you, I mean, we're not them. Right. But I've had those moments myself. How does one grapple with their personal purpose and how it is affecting their, their personal purpose? I just think some things you are compelled to do. Um, and your loved ones and the people that are around you, um, they have to show you some grace sometimes when Mm -hmm. you can't, you know, do something or be somewhere. But then again, you, it's a balancing act. You have to balance and try to do some things, but the nature of your job and what you do is opportunity. It's Mm -hmm. also, you don't know when that opportunity is coming. So it's a bit of a gambler's job. So you have to take the opportunities when they come or you have to let them pass. And Mm. so that's the thing. How often do the opportunities come? How often do they pass? Is this, you know, me missing this uh, school play? Um, Is it going to be bigger than me missing out on this movie? Um, Mm -hmm. That's hard. That's a hard choice. Uh, We can put it in terms of of a lawyer. Me staying at work, working on this case brief or whatever, or me going to my daughter's school recital. Mm -hmm. Um, Those are tough decisions. Um, Me, I stay at the job and and I get that brief because that's how I'm paying for the school. Right, right. And then maybe it's different each time because I know you've shared other times where you had to make those adjustments or you just did things that allow for that adjustment to be maybe more understood, you know, yeah, if it's a graduation, yeah, if it's the graduation, then I'm staying, I'm going to the graduation and I'm staying up all night to work on the brief. So, yeah. Well, what yeah. <laughs> do you think that people need purpose to feel fulfilled? I think some people do. I mm. think I do. I do. I, I have yeah. purpose. I think I do. I think I do wake up with a purpose my purpose changes though. I have they mm. change. Like, you know, now I wake up with a purpose to be at peace. Um, to I pray, Lord, help me to see the things I need to see, help me to be quiet when I'm supposed to be quiet, help me to speak when I am supposed to speak. That's yeah. how I start my day. And I really want that. I want I want to know the difference. Like, I should speak now, I should speak up. This is not right. You know, Mm -hmm. or be quiet, Sharon, be quiet, listen, listen, you need to listen. I'm often telling myself in my head to listen. And that's something I'm very proud of because I have not throughout my life been a good listener. And I think Mm -hmm. that I'm improving with that because I'm talking to myself. I'm saying, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Just listen, listen. So I'm working on... um, uh, practicing my listening skills. <laughs> Do you think it's important to have a career that's built? Like if you're a person that has purpose or if you're a person that believes in purpose um, or you're trying to find your your purpose, do you think it's important that that's built into what you do, like into your career? You know, that's a good question. I just think if your purpose 
is something that's going to monopolize your time and you and we have to live, right? You know, like I would love my my main purpose is to be in a hot tub on a mountain in Montana, you know, <laughs> but as naked just overlooking the mountains, but Damn I can't why. make it I can't make any money doing that. <laughs> So it just depends on what your purpose, my purpose is, that's my purpose, to chill in the hot tub. But yeah. but if your purpose is, I want to be a great painter, I want to paint, and then I want to figure out how to make money off my painting so that I can live, right? Okay, mm-hmm. that's a purposeful plan. Then yeah, you have to stay on that. You have to stay focused on that. You have yeah. to wake up every day thinking about how to make that happen. And I think it's unique. Like for me, my purpose always uh, as a kid was first to make my parents proud and then it rolled into to make my community proud, to do things that allow to destigmatize our stories, who we are, our dialects, our personalities, to share with the world something, um, you know, that I think sometimes is unseen and to also break down barriers and to put us in spaces that maybe people at some point could have thought we don't belong. And then to also uh, support my generation and to support our voice is our experiences, our conversations, and help us untangle all the things that we feel tangled up in, being the guinea pigs of the internet. And the way that I choose to do that is through a passion, which is entertainment. I you know, like to make people laugh, bring them joy, and then talk about things that can hopefully help us all learn something. And to use my platform to to showcase things that I think deserve to be seen. So I think no matter what your purpose is, even if it's not directly like, you know, I could do what I'm, I could have that, my, my purpose and, you know, be somebody that runs a charity or be somebody Absolutely. that runs a community theater or be somebody that just has a, you know, a, you know, an after school dance group. I could still right. do that doing that. I think it just depends on you and what you have fun with the most that allows right. you to really be able to express your purpose through that gift. But if you weren't an entertainer, if you weren't weren't that, what would your other what's your other purposeful thing you think you would do? Well, it's what I just said. I think, you know, if 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 I'm not using the gift of entertainment, then maybe I would be a hairstylist. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. I would be a therapist or I would be, like I said, a, a gym coach, a teacher, run a community theater, uh, be a uh, professor, something that yeah. would still allow me to use uh, my communication skills and right. you know my personality to break the ice and invite people into conversations and build them up and encourage them and also encourage myself for us to have an ex- an equal exchange of experience. And, and that's the side of your dad that that's how you look like your dad because he's a people person. He <laughs> likes yeah. to be around people. He likes to help people. Notice how I said I wanted to be on a mountain by myself. <laughs> In hot. <laughs> Mom, you're hilarious. That's that Leo rising talking. Okay, I got to get into this conversation with Anjanu Ellis Taylor. I thank you so much, uh, Mom, as always. Thank you. Baby, this is. This is Kiki. Listeners, I am so looking forward to my guest here today. She's an Oscar-nominated actor and is the star of the new Ava DuVernay movie, Origin, which is out in theaters now. And I just really admire her work as a performer and as an outspoken activist. And I feel like she's the perfect guest to help me answer the question of today. How do we find purpose in the work we do? Anjanu Ellis Taylor, thank you so much for coming on the show, girl. It's so good to see you. I haven't seen you since Pimp. (laughs) <laughs> I know. I'm so happy to be here. I'm always playing your trouble mama. <laughs> okay. And I live for whether it was, oh my gosh, somebody recently just watched Abducted on Lifetime. They were telling me about. So we've got a chance to do not only just Abducted, but Pimp Together. I can't wait to the next film we do. Okay. It's going to be a, another I deep it. one. I, I feel, I feel it in my heart. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. But, I'm um, ready you know, Today, we're asking this question of how we find purpose in what we do. And I feel like you're such a purposeful artist. Uh, so I'm excited to kind of dive into this que- this question with you. But I want to kind of start at the beginning, you know, because I know you, you've been acting for years. But you didn't start to receive fame and recognition until, I mean, the last decade or so. So I want to talk to you about the time before that recognition came. You know, what was that phase of your life like in the beginning days of you acting and, and all that? I, 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 it was, it was really a situation where, where someone saw, someone saw something in me before I could see it myself, 
you know, um, I, I was not, I didn't grow up thinking I, I would be an actor. I knew something that I, I knew that there was some sort of creative engine in me, but I didn't know what it was, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and then, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a, I'm a church kid. So, um, we didn't have a choice, but to be church thespians, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, like we all had to be in the Easter play, the Christmas play, but it was nothing attached to my destiny. You know, it was just what I had to yeah. do in order to you know, survive in, in New Home Baptist Church. But um, I did some, I did a college play and the, the man who directed it said, you should continue, you should consider this as a path. I didn't take it seriously, but he said, you hmm. should go to grad school. I went to grad school just because really, honestly, I was trying to stave off having to be out in the world and try to get a real mm-hmm. job. Went to graduate school and I found work before I finished graduate school. And I was just working and not really doing anything that made me feel like I was supposed to do this, that this was my calling mm. in any sort of way. Kind of working, kind of working like a non artistic job. Like, Abs- you know. yeah. And, and wasn't it really, I just didn't, I didn't appreciate, I didn't have an appreciation for it. You know, it yeah. wasn't in my bones. Because it was what somebody mm-hmm. else saw in me. It wasn't what I saw in myself, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, and then I, I was working and then people got dependent on my income. So mm-hmm. I had to keep working because of that yes. reason. And um, and then something changed, something switched. And I, 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 I know, I, I think what it was is I had to move back home to Mississippi to take care of a family mm-hmm. member. And everything just took on this urgency because I saw the direct correlation between my effort, my income, and the quality of life in my in my mm. family. So um, I just stopped accepting no from myself and from people who were, I was auditioning for. So at this point, you were acting, but you was it that you were doing roles that you didn't believe in? Is that what it was? You're getting work, but not the kind of parts that you enjoyed playing. Was that the, what you mean by that? Yeah, I did. I was. I did a lot of things that I was honestly just. I did them because I needed the money, you know. Oh. And I was making poor decisions. I was taking for granted. I was taking things for granted. I was. I was. Oh, I'll get another opportunity. And sometimes, and those opportunities didn't didn't come back around. So I, I just was flailing. There was no pa- there was no mm-hmm. focus. There was no path, you know, that I was in charge of, you know. When you went with your family and you were back in Mississippi, what was that flip that was switched? I know you said it's a sense of urgency, but where did it come from? Did it, you know, did it, it clearly it sounds like there was something that made you start to feel more purposeful in your work. Mm-hmm. I mean, how did that how did that bubble up? Yeah, it really, honestly, I, I just, I, I had to work because I had to pay for medical bills. I had to pay for my, the, my loved one's care. And if I didn't, that wouldn't exist because at, at, at a point, this person needed 24 hour care, right? So I had mm. to work. I had to work. Um, so there was that part of it. And then I was back home in Mississippi and I was surrounded by Confederate flags all over the place. And I, I just mm. couldn't take it, you know? So, so then I started, my money became my, the money that I was making from acting became something that I had, I could use or needed to use in order to take care of my family, but also it subsidized and it paid for things that I was doing to fight against the Confederacy in Mississippi. Interesting. One of the things that I did with my money is I put up this billboard in Jackson, Mississippi, and it had it the it was it what it was was I I had We Shall Overcome written on this billboard, but I had the I had the billboard I had the, the letters written in Confederate flags. Mm. And it made people so pissed off. It got it got black folks mad. It got white people mad. And that's exactly what Ooh. I wanted because the whole Confederate flag thing had become this sleeping bear that I could not tolerate. My niece yeah. and nephew were going to school under these flags to get an education and I could not tolerate it anymore. So I was able to use the money I was making from acting to get that billboard. 
So I, it just, it just switched because it became, my money was something that I could use to make things better in my family and in the world. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, you know, before where I would have been like, okay, you don't want me for this job. I'm gonna cry about it. But now it became, oh, you don't want me for this job. Okay. I'm gonna convince you that you're wrong. Really? So wait, what does that look like? What is convincing them that, what is convincing them that they're wrong look like? How do you do that? I mean, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, hell, if they told you no, then you got to just accept it. What, what, what is the uh, way around that in your experience? Well, you know, they will still, what is not just telling me, no, it's like this person, we're going to choose this person. Right. And then sometimes I'm lucky enough that that person will ultimately say no. I'm sure you might've been in this situation before where you're not the first choice, you know, um, and then you have to wait around until that person, the more, in my case, the more famous person, you know, turns a job down or whatever. And then I, you know, I get my leg in that way. Or it's, we don't know about her. We, 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 we're on the fence about Mm. her, blah, 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 blah. And I just keep taping and I'll keep taping and I'll keep taping. Sometimes I'll drive to where these people are and I, and I'll just be like, Mm -hmm. I just want to, let me, let me read for you in, in your presence, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I just was mad persistent. So I understand that, you know, moving back home and obviously having this big responsibility of taking home, the, taking, you know, care of this family member really affected the way you activated um, your persistence, your consistency in, in your craft. How did it affect your actual acting? You know, how did that transition, and maybe it did or maybe it didn't, change the what you brought into your work um, creatively? Yeah, you know, I, 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 I never felt that acting necessarily was something that was necessary for me, mm. but I, these roles started coming my way that, that, that allowed me to communicate things that I personally felt that I could communicate through them, through the work that I was doing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I do. Absolutely. Yeah, I relate to what you're saying. I think my experience is almost kind of a little bit in the reverse where I came into the industry where um, that was exactly what my parents would tell me is what you 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 what you um, are talking about as you started to really take your roles on was I loved acting. I loved performing. You know, as a kid, it was just fun to play pretend and also to have this thing that I could do with my parents that they could understand and we could kind of bond over. But then my parents started to quickly tell me like, Especially when I started getting notoriety, this is not just about you. You know, the community needs mm-hmm. to see you. You need to be choosing there roles that allow the community to feel seen, to represent them. You can't just be an actor. If you're going to be a performer and a, and a creative and an artist, then you have to do stuff that is bigger than yourself. So I absolutely understand what you mean. And I'm curious as to how you balance that because it, it can be difficult, right? You know, I mean, there's the thing about I just need to get my bills paid. This is a role that wants me. And then there's a this is a role that's I don't consider valuable or how do I make this valuable and how do I remain purposeful in that pursuit of, you know, not just being a willy nilly creative, which there's nothing wrong with that, but feeling almost this weight on your back, which I think we naturally feel as black people and black women. Yeah. You know, I, I, I welcome that honestly, Kiki. Like I, I I welcome that. (laughs) Right. I, I, I feel like, I feel like it's, I feel like it's my privilege. I, cause I could be, I could not be mm-hmm. doing this, you know what I mean? And, and I feel like it's a thank you God, you know, that I, that I can do it, that it, that it's me who cares and it could be going to somebody else mm-hmm. who doesn't care, you know? And I, yeah. I care, I care deeply because, um, of my, the legacy of my family. Um, and, and, mm-hmm. and just cause, you know, I'm a black woman and that's what we do. We, we, we are the pillars yeah. of our, of our, of our community. That is what we do. We carry that weight and I welcome that weight. If I can bring it on, you know, in, in something that I do and somebody feels, somebody feels affirmed by that. Oh my God. You know? Yes, absolutely. Is there a particular moment, mm-hmm. uh, experience, job where you actually saw the impact 
of what you did actually infirm, inform your purpose? What I mean by that is like, did you, do you have an experience where you say, oh my gosh, where it kind of clicked for you? Wow, somebody, I impacted this person with my work or wow, my work acting can do more than just pay my bills. It can actually make someone feel this way. I think, I think that I started feeling strongest about that is when I, I did, uh, I played, um, uh, Dr. Maddie Moss Clark in the in the Clark Sisters movie, the movie about the Clark Sisters that came out mm. a few years ago. Um, and that 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 first of all, that film was uh, another Lifetime movie. I love Lifetime. We love the Lifetime. Listen, listen. Um, that those women have been overlooked, um, not seen by the the larger you know, got to say it, white music uh, industry. Mm -hmm. um, and yet their music is foundational to everything that we hear, everything that we hear. Absolutely. And my having the opportunity to be the matriarch and essentially the person who, you know, put them in this place of being that, by orchestrating that, designing that sound, mm. as well as their, you know, their professional path. What it did for me is it, it spoke to, for me, this, this, this invisibility that women have, particularly in patriarchal worlds like the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can totally be. Yes. Yeah. So, 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 so these women who are the pillars, the backbone, the vertebrae, all those things, nothing is going to happen without them, without their money, without their singing, without their presence. Um, they are the engine mm -hmm. of that, but they don't get the credit for being that. I felt that, you know, when I, when I played that role, what I was doing is I was speaking for women in a way particularly in 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 the, in the black church community that hasn't not hasn't necessarily been done before at least in that kind of platform. Yes, yes. You know, I, I think it mattered. It definitely did. It definitely did. Yeah. And like you said, it's an opportunity yeah. to bring stories to the forefront and show people, give them their flowers, so to speak, um, and really mm -hmm. share their story in the way that it deserves to be shown. Um, and that that's big for our community, like you said, for championing those voices. How, how, how can you find your purpose without connecting it to people knowing my name, uh, having big audiences, you know, feeling driven to care about what you do when no one is watching? Most of my professional life, nobody was nobody was watching, and I tell your I told your mother I said Kiki Palmer made me famous. <laughs> oh my Seriously. gosh! Stop. Seriously, let but you always you, when I you've did, always been a brilliant actress. No, listen, no. Let me tell you when you when I did Abducted with you, you it changed my it changed my life. You know, and people were coming up to me mad at me. Like, why did you take that okay. baby? Why did you do that? Like, looking at me funny. I'm like, I'm not that lady. I didn't, I didn't do that for real. You know? That's how you and know you acted you. your behind off. <laughs> you know, I, black folks take stuff real seriously, honey. And they were like mad at yes. me. Um. But yeah, but you know, outside of doing so things like that, for the most part, the work that I was work I was doing, you know, nobody was really paying, nobody's really checking for, or paying attention to, you know. And I and I I, I did a said a, did a speech a couple years ago at this thing, and you know, I talked about I talk about how we how we stigmatize darkness, mm -hmm. and that 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 is you know that is some white supremacist work. But what we think things being in the dark is something being something being bad or something being mm -hmm. not seen. Um, but I I have found I so I, I said that for the most of my creative most of my professional acting career anyway has been done in the dark. But while I was in that dark, I saw it as the darkness that happens in, in the womb when a baby is inside you, the darkness that happens hmm. at night when we are we are nourished and we are, you know, it, we are re regenerated. Um, when we see the stars, hmm. we, those things happen at night. You know, 
Um, yes. I, I'm a dark woman. I have dark skin and, and all mm. of that's dark that I celebrate. So that even when I'm not seen, I'm still working. My, my work still has value because at, during that time when nobody was looking at me, I was taking care of my family. My family was being fed. The, the woman that I cared about was being cared for because of the, that, 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 that check that came from something that nobody saw. So I, I, I celebrate that darkness. I celebrate darkness period. I just wanted to say that I love so much of what you're saying about the darkness and about, you know, because I think a lot of times, again, we feel like either we feel like our work can't be pur purposeful or we feel like it's not mm -hmm. valid in its purpose because mm -hmm. no one's watching. But you've said something so critical because that's that's, you know, when you mentioned birth, when you mentioned night and re rejuvenation, like these are the years where, you know, it's like when we're doing that thing and we think nobody's watching and we stay on course, we're building our story and we're building yes. our understanding standing of, of our purpose through those experiences. Yes. It may not all yes. come together and it may not all be so immediately clear, but when we're taking that time and we're continuing to value what it is we want to do and what we want to say, and we're breathing life and breathing worth into it. By the time we get to that main stage of whatever it is that we're doing, it's those experiences are going to make it all make sense. And even when you're talking mm -hmm. about your mom, and how going back to Mississippi and that experience of being reconnected to where you're from and taking care of your mother and all this stuff, it reaches a point where that informs your purpose. Here I am as a, a caretaker in this way. How can I also be a caretaker in my work? How can my work take care? care and I think that is just so it's so amazing because sometimes we shy away from folding our person personal world into our work but the more that we do that the more we do feel purposeful and the more drive I think we're, we, we have with what we're doing yeah I this it, one would not uh, one would not exist without the other for me yeah I mean the concept of being a public figure or celebrity I mean, how do you feel about that in general? Or maybe has it changed? Like from the beginning of your career, obviously it doesn't seem like that's ever been your focus, but from the beginning of your career, what were your thoughts on that? And then what what have your thoughts become now? Well, I, I don't consider myself, I don't consider myself a, a famous person at all. You know, I, I the, the way I live my life, don't nobody be paying no attention to me. Don't nobody be paying no attention to me. And <laughs> Listen, it's it's real. The thing is, though, Kiki, the, you know, you know, the practical side of it, though, the practical side of people knowing who you are means that you can do more work. Yeah, that's true. Yes. We that's, can't that's, deny that's, that brand yeah, building, that's essentially. The practical side yeah. of it. And and the, the, the metrics of folks who know you, you know, about how many followers you have, followers you have, blah, 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 all those things like that. And I'm not on social media. I don't, you know, I'm, I don't do any of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I completely lean into, am, is, is, are you, do you feel the work that you see that I do on screen or wherever you see it? And are you moved by it? That's the only thing I can, that's the only yeah. thing I got in my pocket. That's it. That's it. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's, and that's going to be it. Cause I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything differently. Cause girl, I got to live with myself. I got to live with myself. I yeah. got to, I got to see myself in the morning. I got to face my niece and nephew. I got to face my family and I don't want any, and let me tell you this. And I don't I want to know how you feel about this too, Kiki. Any time yes. that I have tried to do something that did not feel natural to me, I have failed. It has been a failure. Yes. I feel the same way. And, and I'll even go into even deeper on the we know we've also done things we've loved and they didn't like do, quote unquote, what we wanted them to do. But the sure, feeling sure. of doing something that doesn't feel authentic to you and then that also not going the way you want. It's a different okay. feeling. The first one, I I'm feel on. like I've learned a lesson and I've figured out how to maybe manage the situation better. The second one, I feel like. I, you know, I sold a piece of myself or I wasn't being authentic, yes. I wasn't being genuine and there's nothing to really gain or really to learn from it because it wasn't really me. And that really stinks. Um, I've yeah. definitely been in those situations many times. And, you know, maybe they teach us something in itself, you know, but it, it's still quite difficult in the kind of industry that we have where there's so many opinions of what people think we need to do and why we should do it. And like you said, how to make ourselves stand out. You know, you have publicists and managers and agents, and it is really important to, like you said, 
you know, stay grounded in what it is that's important to you. But you 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 also have done like amazing things as a public figure outside of your work, you know, in terms of activism, from what you said with the billboard to you being on the the red carpet uh, and wearing that, you know, iconic jacket with the word queer on it. So, I mean, you do show yourself in this world and stand up for things. How do you view your role as a public figure? Like, because you don't even have to do that. You could be completely... We don't know Anjanu Ellis Taylor, but you do. You have taken these big moments and these opportunities to say something. You know why? If it, if it ain't gonna be me, who's gonna do it? <laughs> okay. You know who's who's gonna do it? I think you speak because there's silence. You know, and I I, I have never found I have never found that tenable. It's all I, I've I've never been able to never been able to live like that ever ever been able to live like that. And I, you know, I, I, you know, we, we think, I think because folks are in coastal communities and I come from another coast, I come from the Gulf coast, you know, but there's this sort of mm-hmm. feeling that, you know, we all are open and accepting and blah, blah, blah. First of all, that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so a lie. But we, we pretend that we affect that. Right. You know, um, and, and I'm from the coast where we don't pretend nothing. We don't pretend it's just, that's just not the case. And the most, the most satisfying thing that I felt Kiki, honestly, cause th- I think that same year I, there was an article written and I was talking about being, you know, um, uh, being same gender loving and, you know, being queer and, um, you know, I didn't think anything about it. My family, my friends, they knew that about, they knew that about me for the most part. They just was, was surprised that mm-hmm. I would say it in that kind of platform, that kind of wide platform. And I, and I said, well, you know, yo, I'll, I'll say it. It ain't that big of a deal, but I'll say it. Who cares? <laughs> right. right. Dude, the next morning after that article came out, I got two texts from two very famous people. One who's worldwide famous and the other one who is less famous, but incredibly famous in the world, in the work that they do. Both of them said, thank you. Thank you for doing that. My gosh. And these are grown, these are grown folks. They're not children. They were grown people and they thanked me for doing it. You think, hey, like what you said in the beginning of it is like, depending on the area you're in, if you're in New York or if you're in, uh, you know, California, then yeah, maybe you think everybody's accepting. But in the rest of the world, in America, mm-hmm. we don't need everybody is. You still on the whole, you have to be this, you need to be that, and there's just not right. a lot of space in between. But then also, I think it's generational. Like we may see a lot of Gen Zers, we may see a lot of millennials be like, I'm this, I'm that, I'm living in my skin. But when we talk about Gen X. No, there's not a lot of people back from, you know, we think about the early 90s, 80s that were, ex- you know, experiencing their life fully personally that could actually get out there and say, I'm queer. You know, I, I live a queer lifestyle or blah, 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 blah. Like that's so for you to have done that. I'm absolutely I'm not surprised that you got reached out because we don't actually get that a lot. Most people it's like it's, it still gives don't ask, don't tell or you see who I'm with. You know what I mean? Where they don't actually <laughs> Say the words. Right. You know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> yes. Yes. Why I got to say so something? You see who- It's big. Right. And it's so generational. So it's major that you did that because it's like, yeah, like, yeah, this is, you know, the thing. And then, I mean, but you're, again, you just recently, okay, you have this amazingly huge film out, Origin, and congratulations on that. I love Ava DuVernay, all the work that she's done. But you were- outside handing out flyers in front of a theater recently for the movie. What compelled you to do that? It's funny. You know, when I went out there passing out those flyers, I, I, I did that on my own. I don't know if I, I t- well, I had to tell Ava because I needed, I needed the postcards to do it, but I just went out there by myself. I didn't tell anybody that I was going to do that. I just did it. But what happened was these two young people, I say young because they're younger than me, 
um, they saw me and they said, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll take your postcard, you know, because I was like, Peep, I don't like people giving me paper. So I can imagine how somebody would feel, me, you know, me giving them paper. I was like, I'm sorry, please take my please take my paper. Anyway, they were like, yes, can we can we film you? doing this i was like yeah shoot it gives me another it gives me another opportunity to talk about the film so they filmed me they talked to me and then somehow ava it was someone sent it to ava and then ava posted it and then it just sort of became this you know thing uh. that people knew about you know but I didn't come. I didn't have. I didn't bring no film crew out there with me. I was just out there by myself on a cold day in Los Angeles and was passing out them flyers. And I did it, Kiki, because it needed to be done. Right? We the mm. Neon, who the, the film production, the the, the the distribution company, they didn't have a lot of money. You know, they don't have billboards yeah. to go all up and down Sunset Boulevard. They didn't have. They don't have that. We didn't have commercials. You know, we didn't have none of that. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, it's frustrating to me. What can I do <sighs> about this? What can I do? If all I, I can just do have to is say what again, because you've said something so critical. And I say this all the time because let's get real down mm-hmm. into the nitty gritty of it. As an actor, you and I both know you're not always getting paid a million dollars. I mean, it, it just it's mm-hmm. just not happening. You know, I know right. that it's a different experience. Obviously, I'm not comparing acting and performing to nine to fives. They're totally different situations. However, in our industry, within the corporation of what we do, everybody to some degree isn't really getting everything right there's always some elements to it that's like uh oh we got to do blah 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 but I think uh, the part that I really want to pull out what you're saying is that when we choose work on the basis of being purposeful that we are that we believe in that we think is important that we want the world to see despite all of the difficulties that go into having put that film together and just the corporate politics and whatever you have it the, the the doing what need to be done because you care about the work you're doing. I think it's important if we all got to be in this world, right, doing work, whether you work a nine to five, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're a professor, you're an actor. We are all struggling to make sure that we can maintain. We're not always getting all the elements that we feel like we should to improve our scenario. But this is why I think like per- doing doing work that you at least care about can make a lot of this stuff just, I don't want to say a little bit more easier, but it, it, it kind of has that same feeling that we had about being authentic and doing authentic things versus doing things that you mm-hmm. think are going to re- you know, get you a certain result. Because, yeah, not every movie we do has, an, has a million dollar budget and can do the marketing that Barbie did. It's just not happening. So now what do we do with okay. that? You know? Come on. Exactly. It's so true. Exactly. exactly. So... Obviously, you got the Oscar nomination. That was huge and insane. What were you thinking when you heard that for the first time? Uh, yeah, I, I was, I, I just, I was, I was happy. I was happy about that. <laughs> I, no, I'm not gonna lie. I was, I was really yes. happy. I mean, yes. That I, yeah, that, that I ain't never thought that those words would ever be after my name. Not in a million years, you know. Ever, ever, <laughs> you know, I'm. I'm I wasn't surprised, Anjanu. I really Aww. wasn't. I really was not surprised. Aww. I got to tell you that it it seems exactly fitting for you and the type of uh, wonderful actor that you are. So, still, congrats again. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And congratulations on your Emmy win, hon. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So excited. Oh my god! You know, it's god. so funny because that's great. It literally is so cool. Like you said, like I don't I don't know that I was I mean, I think everybody is like, would be cool to win an award. It would be cool to have an ego. It would it would be cool. But you just, you yeah. know, like, let me just do the work. Let me just do my thing. Like, let me just focus on that. So when it does come back around and someone or your your peers say, Hey, you did your thing, it it you do right. feel like, okay, you know what? All right. It really feels good to have that feeling. So I definitely I definitely know what you mean when you're like, I was really happy because I was, too. I really, really was. But obviously you did a huge film. I mean, you know, playing characters like the author Isabel Wilkerson in Origin or Venus and Serena Williams mom and King Richard. What are the most challenging things about those kinds of parts, especially because you're playing real people? Right. With with Miss Price, with playing Miss Orsine, what was what was challenging, I would say, is 
making sure that we knew who she was. You know, I, this woman, we didn't know that she was Venus, Serena's coach. I didn't know that. I just thought she was a nice no lady who cheered for her children. Mm-hmm. And and that's not true. That is not true. So I, 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 you know, in terms of like difficulty, it was a joy to play the part. But I had to fight for that. I had to fight to make sure that Miss Orsine Price took the space in the story of their family as much as possible because that's what she deserves. Miss Orsine could have had her own movie, you know? When you talk about giving her space and you that you had to fight for that, what does that look like exactly? Like, were there moments and times where you, because, you know, we sometimes do sessions with the directors and with the actors where we, you know, mm-hmm. we'll improv, et cetera. Were there moments where you had to say, I think that she needs more? She should have a, you know, like, how did you handle those situations? Yeah, I said it. I said it. She needs more. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying it. 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 I was respectful. You know, I I, I was respectful. I was a pain in the ass, but I was respectful. You know know what I mean? I'm just saying they got tired of me, but, you know, I was respectful. And I think, I think ultimately at the end, they probably, they were glad. They were glad at the re- they oh, were glad yes. at the results. I was just I love what you said because as an actor, I think I've especially learned this is like when people hire you, that's also what they want. Now, yeah, maybe sometimes it can be a pain in the ass, but it's like if I'm doing a movie with Anjanou Ellis, I'm doing a movie with Angela Bassett, I'm doing a movie with with an with an incredible actor, I gotta listen to them. Because I didn't just hire them to say my words, but I hired them to bring my words to life, to bring the story to life. So it's really, I think, really important what you're saying. And to me, it also piggybacks off of purpose because you're being purposeful with the work that you're doing by literally thinking to yourself, like, what, what what was this character's involvement? How will this look in the overall arch of the film and how can I actually you know yeah activate that you know activate my personal power as an actor to to really help tell that story so I think that's really important what you're saying because sometimes I think people are afraid to uh you know do that advocate for themselves oh I don't want to seem selfish mm-hmm. or I don't want to seem this I want well if it's for the benefit of the story then you're actually you not go. being selfish you're being a team player <laughs> yeah there you go that part that part because if it's if it's if it's i want i want more lines in this you know what i mean if it's that (laughs) sit down (laughs) i hate the more lines people where y'all in a group (laughs) scene and they just keep (laughs) ad-libbing it's like you want a line so bad like if you don't stop boy (laughs) um okay at this point (laughs) because you know what i'm talking about it happens all the time um (laughs) <laughs> so at this point that you're at in your career now, how do you view the journey that you took to get here? I mean, do you have a feeling of everything happens for a reason? You know, are there some frustrations? Is there anything that you would have done different? Is there anything you could offer anyone else uh, that are that are transitioning in their field? I feel like I wasted a lot of time taking the wrong thing seriously. Mm. And I feel like, I feel like, you know what I mean? Like I was just, I was, I just wasn't focused, you know, I, was, I just wasn't focused, but at the same time I was taking myself too seriously and I just, I, there was no joy in what I was doing. That's it. There was no joy in what I was doing. Zero, like none. What do you mean? What you know do you mean, what I mean by mean? the wrong thing? <laughs> what do you mean by the wrong thing? Seriously. And you're hilarious. She said no joy. <laughs> no joy. It was just, oh, it was just such a, ugh. I would hate to see me coming. Oh like, my. ugh, here she go. <laughs> here she come. Ugh. I'll tell you this. What this woman said to me, and this woman said to me on this job I had, she said, treat your problems like your children, if you have children or your, you know, relatives, whatever. She said, treat them like children. She said, when you walk out of the door and you come to work, Tell your children or tell your problems, okay, I'll be back. But I got to go to work right now. I got to go to work. Mm. I'll be back, but I got to go to work right now. So there was a time when I was bringing all my children to work with me. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) shit. I was bringing all everybody, all everybody to work with me, you know, and just I was just so self-focused and just, anyway, I got rid of that. Mm. liberated that you know from liberated myself from that 
And it sounds so simple, but it really is true. And I think that's the yeah. joy in it. I think it becomes, like you said, too serious and self-focused when you feel yeah. you have to be something or you have to prove something. And we all do it. We all do it. But if we can remember to relax and just have fun, I think it's, you know, it makes yeah. things a lot easier. Yeah. And also, don't be an asshole. <laughs> that part. Don't be an asshole. Heavy on the don't be an asshole. Don't be heavy asshole. on the don't be heavy. an asshole. Girl, yes. It has been such a pleasure having you on the show with me. But always, before I let my guests go, we always got to do a quick game because that's what we do over here at Baby. This is Kiki Palmer. So the game is called Quickies with Kiki. So here's how it works I'll give you a series of rapid fire questions, this or that style, and you have to choose just one. Okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can only listen to one of these artists for the rest of your life. Frank Ocean or her? Frank Ocean. He's amazing. Okay, I know you've spent time in both of these places, but you have to choose one to move to. New York or L.A.? I know what you're going to choose. You have to choose what I know you're going to choose. Earl. N New York. <laughs> exactly, because L.A., I'm so sorry, L.A., but you be doing too much. <laughs> um, Best classic Southern food. Gumbo or grits? I'm not sure what you're going to choose for this. Oh, mm. honey, gumbo. I, I, if I had an IV to I put to my, yeah, to yeah. my brains. Okay. If you couldn't be an actor, which would you rather be? A historian or an author? Oh, I feel like you have a good answer for this. I would be both. Yeah, be like an author that's a historian. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or a historian that's an author. That's a very good answer. Okay, if you had to go back to school, where would you rather go? Because you went to both Brown University or NYU. Ooh, brilliant mind. Come on, flex. Brown University, NYU. Ooh. I would, I would. See, I went to NYU for trifling reasons. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, school is what I did between me going, me shopping and partying. That's 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 just the truth. That also I sounds actually Brown. quite lovely, Anjanu. Ooh, I mean, Brown seems uh, like it's just so brown. Like it just feels so. Ooh, yes, hi, fabulous. Well, Anjanu, you are amazing, brilliant. Congratulations on Origin. Congratulations on all the work you've always been doing. You've always been amazing. I'm happy that I've always known you. I mean, it's over 10 years at this point. I met you when I was, what, 19, 20, 21? Girl. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait till we work together again. I hope so, too. Uh, we, we putting that in the universe because I would love that. Oh, yeah. That's happening. You know that it's happening. We got to get our third movie in the tank. Woo. Exactly. Exactly. Kiki, thank you so much. Thank you. I love that conversation with Anjanu. And it was so good to catch up with her. I mean, she's given me a lot to think about in terms of my own purpose as an entertainer. What I really took away from what Anjanu had to say is that you find your purpose by not taking yourself too seriously and really centering the important people in your life. And I think that's definitely something I can get behind. What a lovely lesson she's impacted on us. I can't wait to do this with y'all again next time because <laughs> you know it's your girl. Baby, this is, this is Kiki.